You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Yes, a Y in or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. To get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. Find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. Email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Text us, 865-658-5824. Some of you are wondering, why in the heck are you live at 430 Central Time? Well, we had a little extra time, and I've got to get a ton of mock drafts in. So I thought, why not try to throw together a seven-round mock draft for the Packers using my personal draft board? The board isn't finished, um, as you guys have heard me say over and over and over. Probably not going to be finished till about a week before the draft starts. So um, I'm just trying to fine tune, and I'm also kind of doing these little exercises where we can see, all right, who's looking like they may be available and the, the best value in the pick. So what I'm going to do is use the PFF, um, the PFF mock draft uh, simulator. So we're going to use that platform. And I'm going to have that on the screen for you guys. And I'm going to try to explain where these players sit on my board. And we're going to have this in podcast form as well. So we'll try to communicate as best we can what we're seeing here. Now, the problem is it's going to be a little bit long winded because I'm going to have to mention every pick as I take them off of my board. Okay, so there'll be a little bit of dead air there. You guys just bear with me again. These are exercises we do every year. At least I do um, using my draft board to kind of get everything fine tuned. And why not do it live? Why not go ahead and uh, and do it in podcast form too? Just a little extra content for you uh, guys and gals that can't get enough of these mock drafts. So we're still going to do our normal time tonight, 7 p.m. Central for PTA Live. The guys will be with me. We got some cool topics there. A little bit of news broke. Um, we got a uh, you know, uh, one player, uh, Tavondre Sweat. We'll talk about it tonight. Obviously, had a little a little hiccup in in personal issues that'll probably cost him some draft positioning. So we'll kind of talk about that and how it may play into the uh, the draft as well. So with that with that being said, just give a shout out. We got Chris Nine in the chat. We got Tim Reese. Good to see you, buddy. Ron Samble, Brent M. Um, funny, we just went live randomly. We got almost 100 people in here, man. Y'all are awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and kill my camera so you ain't got to stare at me the rest of the way. Go ahead and share the screen here. And uh, sounds like everybody can hear me talking. I know we've done these solo before and look up 20 minutes in and people are like, hey, Clay, your your mic's muted, bro. We can't hear you. So um, just confirm you can still hear me in the chat as I take myself off the screen here. I'm pretty sure you can. But uh, we'll just jump right into it here if you can. So I'm um, just waiting on that confirmation. Um, what time did this start? Number one Packer fan. Um, just started right now, buddy. You got in just in time, man. All right. So I think everybody can hear us. So we're good. All right. Let's do it, man. Let's get this thing cranked up. Um, obviously, like I said, we're going to use uh, the PFF mock draft simulator. So let's go ahead and start it. And I'm going to have to comb back through them and kind of see who was taken here. All right. So obviously no trade backs or trade ups, anything like that. We're going to just stick and pick. I think that's the best way to get this information in. So I'll kind of read these off as we go, and hopefully I don't take too long finding them on my board because my board does differ a lot from some of these uh, databases. But number one, the Chicago Bears take Caleb Williams. Obviously no big surprise there, right? Number two, the Washington Commanders take Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU. Another one not a big surprise there. I I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears shocked the world and took Jaden Daniels with one. I really wouldn't now. Would I put money on it? Absolutely not. It seems like Caleb Williams is, is going to be the guy. Um, Drake May is another one that recently he's dropped on boards. He's number six on my board. He's actually significantly higher than Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels was 13th. Uh, Drake May is six. And again, guys, I apologize. I won't be able to communicate with the chat too much here if we're going to get through this seven-round mock and then get the, the stream set up for tonight. So please don't think I'm ignoring you here. I know we got a bunch of people in the chat right now. So thank you all for – Hopping on. All right. So at number four, the Arizona Cardinals 
select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU. That's an interesting pick. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes the very next pick at number five to the Chargers. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is my second-rated player overall in this draft, only behind Joe Alt. Um, and then let's see here, number seven, the Titans go Rome Adunze out of Washington. All right, so he is off the board. We have got uh, before him actually uh, the uh, looks like the the Giants took JJ McCarthy out of Michigan. So JJ McCarthy, another quarterback, he's forty four on my board. I'm not as high on JJ McCarthy, but that doesn't mean NFL teams aren't obviously. I'm just a dumb redneck in here trying to figure the draft out. So um, Dallas Turner, edge defender from Alabama is now off the board. Dallas Turner, I actually had him sitting at – he's pretty high on my board, I'm pretty sure, as I come through. I had him in the 28 spot, so a little bit of a reach there. But, you know, you're, you're probably going to see some edge defenders fly off the board if what Daniel Jeremiah said is accurate. You know, he said that uh, uh, Leatu Latu, um, he'll probably be taking off somewhere eight, somewhere between 18 to 20 boards. They'll just remove him from the first round boards. So uh, simply because of the neck injury and the questions there. So you may see someone like Dallas Turner, Chop Robert, Chop, Chop Robinson, uh, Jared Verse, those type of guys uh, come off the board a little bit sooner than Latu if Latu do, does uh, uh, start to sink there with that injury. So um, another thing too, I wish I could show you guys my board because I've got these guys lit up in red with injury concerns and uh, obviously with Tavondre Sweat's news breaking, same thing there. So um, I, that's, you know, he's he's going to drop on my board. I, I want to know – I'm not going to move him down my board, but I want to know that there's issues there that would cause another team to not select him, if that makes sense. So um, I won't get into the details. We'll talk about it tonight as far as uh, what happened with Tavondre Sweat. I'm sure you guys and gals already know about that. So number nine, the Chicago Bears get Joe Alt. My, the top-rated prospect on my board in the entire draft – the Bears get him at number nine. That is very interesting right there. Holy cow. That's wild. J.C. Latham at 10, coming off the board there to the Jets. Um, so, J.C. Latham is gone. He was in the 14 spot for me. Um, let's see what else we got here. Brock Bowers, the best tight end in the draft. He gets selected number 11 to the Vikings. I don't like this, guys. The Bears getting Joe Alt. Uh, to protect the blind side of Caleb Williams, and then the Vikings getting the best tight end in the draft. That, that kind of sucks. Ain't going to lie. But uh, Brock Bowers is my fifth best prospect in this year's draft. So he is off the board. Um, let's see your Terry and Arnold cornerback. That should be a pretty solid pick there. He's a little bit lower on my board. I've got him at the 31 spot. So he is now gone. Um, let's see Quinya Mitchell. I'm pretty sure is my top rated corner. He's in the 12 spot. He has been selected. Um, let's see Fashanu tackle from the New Orleans Saints. Um, I've got him in the 16 spot, so he's gone. Graham Barton, uh, they've got him listed as a tackle. I think we all would agree he's probably going to play guard at the next level would be my bet. Um, he's going to the Colts there at number 15. Um, someone who could play tackle in a pinch, but the arm length is an ideal is what I'm hearing. So um, let's see here. Brian Thomas Jr., that's one of Jake Shavink's draft crushes right there. Number 16 going to the Seattle Seahawks again. That's Brian Thomas Jr. I think I've got him a little lower on my board, if I remember correctly. And this is this is going to get me laughed at here. But again, I try not to let the opinions of others sway me when it comes to uh, you know when it comes to my board itself. I've got Brian Thomas Jr. Right, Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. I've got him in the 89 spot, and I'm going to double check it again to make sure I'm not missing anything there, missing a a portion of the equation there, but. Um, just uh, absolutely wild that he is considered one of the best wide receivers in the draft, and I've got him all the way down to 89. Um, Fuaga, tackle, goes number 17. He's pretty high on the old board here. He's actually my top or my second best tackle. He's in the number seven spot, so he is gone. This is where you're going to see it potentially when the Packers pick at 25. There might be a, a couple of those top-tier tackles too, which is pretty wild. Pittsburgh goes with Jared Verse, edge defender out of Florida State at number 20. So he is gone. Um, you're starting to see – you continue to see these Tier 1 positions of importance um, flying off the board for sure. Nate Wiggins, cornerback, goes 21. Um, I have got Nate Wiggins in the 25 spot, so pretty uh, pretty solid there. Uh, Chop Robinson uh, with the number 22 pick. I've actually got Chop in the 11 spot on my board, uh, one of those guys I'm real high on there, another Tier 1 position. Um, Bo Nix, quarterback, going to the Vikings. 
I tell you, Bo Nix is, is, you know, he's in the 41 spot on my board. He's actually higher than J.J. McCarthy on my board. Um, hearing people rave over him and hearing Greg Cosell interview him the other day, you're talking about a, an extremely high IQ quarterback. And I'm not talking about high IQ like a nerd. Like, you can just tell this dude, he, he loves ball. And it was just awesome hearing him talk about and answer questions from Greg Cosell. Great questions from Cosell. I mean, they don't call him the GOAT for nothing. He uh, he was asking questions like, you know, what's the process in which you guys read the defense, you know, in your time there at Oregon? He said, you know, he went in great detail. We started with the boundary safety, worked our way to the strong, to the SAM, basically. Boundary safety to the SAM. He said, if you key in on those two positions, it'll tell you 90% of the information you need in reading the defense. Guys, I've been watching football a long time. I've been trying to study football for a long time. I have never heard anyone specifically say that, and I was just like, that makes a lot of sense. What the safety does on the boundary side and what the Sam backer does, obviously on the strong side of the formation, can tell you a whole lot about the potentials of that defense. And at that point, it's okay. If they're lined up you know, a certain way, each of those guys – all right, let's go ahead and X these defenses out of the equation. It's the whole thing that Greg Cosell was talking about. Elimination, right? He, he talked about coming to the coming to the line and evaluating the play, and then elimination, isolation. Eliminate what you know the defense can't be, and then narrow it down to, okay, it's probably going to be this. Now let's where's our isolation? Where's our matchup? So we're never going to get through this if I continue to talk about stuff like Bo Nix. So I just want to say that's – I would – that, that would suck if the Vikings got Bo Nix. I think he's one of those guys at high IQ. He may go on to be a, a decent quarterback in the league. I really believe that. Then at number 24, Amarius Mims is off the board to Dallas. So I wish I could show my board right now. Obviously, I can't um, because I can't share two screens at once on here. Um, but uh, the, the plan here really is um, – the plan is to trust my board, essentially, right? and go with the best player available. So if we were to do that on my board right now, the best players available are Leatu Latu, edge defender from UCLA, but you got the injury concerns, right? Seeing that edge isn't an immediate need for us and there are injury concerns, I'm going to have to pass on him. Next would be Jerzan Newton, also known as Johnny Newton, defensive lineman from Illinois. Then Byron Murphy, defensive lineman from ta uh, Texas. And then Troy Fontana, uh, tackle from Washington, and Kool-Aid McKinstry in the 20 spot. You've also got Jackson Powers Johnson there as well. So when you kind of look at the tiers in which they would fall, the top tier talent is obviously lot too, but you got the injury. We're going to pass there. The next tier would fall under Johnny Newton and Byron Murphy. And then Fontana, Kool-Aid McKinstry um, would be in the next tier, and then Jackson Powers Johnson, a slot tier there. I do it in increments of five on my scoring system. So really what it comes down to is Johnny Newton's the best player available here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to pull the trigger on Johnny Newton, and, you know, PFF agrees. So um, it sucks. You guys see Cooper DeGene sitting there. You're like, no, Clayton, take Cooper. That makes more sense. On my board, it doesn't. And I'm not saying Cooper's a bad player, but my board, he's in the 33 spot several tiers below um, Johnny Newton. So if we're going to stick to my board here and go best player available, I'm going to take Johnny Newton here. Defensive lineman out of Illinois, that is our pick. So he is off the board. So there you go. Now we're back on the clock at 41. Let's climb back up and just take a quick look at who was taken. Jackson Powers Johnson went one pick after us. There are some fans mad at me right now. Again, guys, this is just an exercise, okay? Not saying this is how I would pick my draft. Uh, if it were tomorrow, we're just kind of looking at the board that I've created and saying, okay, how's this thing going to fall? Um, all right, Cooper DeGene goes. So those two guys kind of shows you there's a chance they could both be there. There's a chance they could both be gone, right? Xavier Worthy, wide receiver. I'm pretty sure I've got him fairly low on my board. Um, and, again, the Underwear Olympics skyrocketed him, right, uh, towards the top of, of some people's boards. But Xavier Worthy, I've gotten the 110 spot. So kind of show you um, how little thought I put into the combine and all that. You know, I'm, I'm leaning on the tape over, over the combine. I'm leaning on the grades over the combine for sure. Uh, Tyler Gotten is next, uh, obviously offensive tackle. I've taken him a couple of times in some of my mocks. Um, 
let's see here. Tyler Gotten, where are you at, big dog? He is definitely listed as a tackle. So Tyler Gotten is in the 61 spot for me. So it seems like I'm usually taking him at that 58 when I have taken him. Um, all right, let's see. You got Latu finally flies off the board there. Of course, he goes to Baltimore, right? That's just such a Baltimore thing to do. Uh, take him and just turn him into an absolute superstar of a pass rusher. That's just what they do over there. Next is Kool-Aid McKinstry coming off the board. All right, so he is gone. I'll probably do this with my board for the first three rounds, and we'll just finish it out real quick with the uh, with the PFF system. Jordan Morgan next, tackle. Um, he was taken. He's in the 35 spot for me, so that's a pretty solid pick there where he was taken. Um, now we're into round two, Lad McConkey. I'm kind of big on Lad McConkey. I've got him in the 50 spot, so he's off the board now. Um, next you've got uh, Kingsley Sua Mataya, tackle out of BYU. Um, I think he's a little bit lower on my board, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I've got him down in the 59 spot. I've got several other tackles graded out higher than him for sure. Uh, Darius Robinson, uh, edge defender from Missouri, one of those versatile guys. Some people are comping him to a J.J. Watt. He is now off the off the board there in the 35 spot. Ennis Rake Straw Jr., somewhere Tim just went into convulsions thinking about uh, – uh, our man Enos Rake Straw Jr. going somewhere other than the Packers. I've got him in the 34 spot. I've got a real high grade on him. He's a solid prospect for sure. Uh, Kamari Lassiter, we actually talked about him this morning on Good Morning Lambo. Um, he goes in the 37 spot here. I've got him at 53, so we're not – no love lost there. Missing out on him for sure at that spot. Troy Franklin, wide receiver, going in the 38 spot. Let's see where I've got old Troy Franklin. i got Troy Franklin at 49. This, this draft board is pretty spot on because I'm not having to scroll much yet, which is kind of cool. It shows us that we're, we're in the ballpark, right? Uh, up, up next is wide receiver Adonai Mitchell going to Carolina. Um, Adonai Mitchell on my board. As soon as I say that, watch me have to scroll for days now. Of course I would, right? Let's see, where's he at? I've got him, Adonai Mitchell, I have got in the 93 spot. Okay, so quite the reach there according to my board. Um, and then we got tackle Roger Rosengarten from Wa or going to Washington. Actually played played for Washington, the Washington Huskies on the uh, on the West Coast, but is going to the Washington Commanders there with the number forty pick. Again, that is Rosengarten. I'm trying to think of where I have him at on my board. There he is, number eighty three. Not bad. Okay, a little bit of a reach though, for sure. All right, so here we are on the clock. According to my board, <laughs> this this hurts. This stings. You know, we took. We took Johnny Newton with the 25th pick, right? And these are the things you got to think about. These are the things the Packers are doing, too, is trying to look and walk through every single scenario. We took Johnny Newton at 25, and I told you guys, he and Byron Murphy pretty much had the same grade on my board, right? Well, now the best player available on my board is Byron Murphy, and to the best of my knowledge, he is still available in here somewhere, too. Let me go positions and see if that is the case. Byron Murphy, Byron Murphy. I must have missed him. So he has nope. Yeah, he's been he's already been taken. Okay, so I missed one there. Good deal. Just want to double check. I was gonna say if Byron Murphy is still there when we pick. Holy cow. Let's see who took him. I must have uh skipped a few and overlooked him there. There he is, Byron Murphy, Cincinnati. So it was right after Fuaga, right? Okay, so he did go. All right, good deal. That makes me feel better. I was sitting here going, man, if I could have gotten Byron Murphy with the second round pick. And missed out on those others. That would suck. Fontana has gone too. We see that. So, to the best of my knowledge here, the best players available on my board are tied in Jatavian Sanders in the 24th spot. you got Braylon Trice, edge defender from Washington, in the 26th spot. Christian Haynes, guard out of UConn, in the 27th spot. And then you got Tavondre Sweat at 30. So, obviously, this is kind of a, a little bit of a decision to make. And um, basically what it comes down to for me is, obviously, I don't think we should take a tight end here. And, again, this isn't a reach because all these guys are in the same tier on my board. But really what it comes down to is, is two guys, um, actually three guys. You've got Braylon Trice, edge defender from Washington, Christian Haynes, guard from UConn, and then Tyler Newbin, um, safety from Minnesota all three of which pretty much have the same draft grade on them. They're going to be in the same tier on my board. So really what it comes down to is what's most important to you, right guard, right, uh, safety, 
or uh, edge defender. We're pretty well set at edge. It doesn't mean you won't take one if the board falls just right. And uh, I think getting Braylon Trice there at 41 would be a steal. I really do. But when you're talking about potentially getting – uh, another starter here, right? Braylon Trice would not be playing a starting role. Christian Haynes would plug right in at right guard and be your starting right guard and, and play it well. I believe that with everything in me. Tyler Newbin could start as a box safety. So now you got to ask yourself. This spring, make sure you're eating stress-free with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every single one of Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Like literally two minutes. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan and Veggie. And they've got more than 60 add-ons every single week, like breakfast, on-the-go, lunch, snacks, beverages. So there's nothing to wait for. Get started right away. If you're looking for something gourmet, they've got that too. they got premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, asparagus. I don't even eat that good. It's also going to be tailored to your schedule. You can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need, pause, or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. So head over to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code packdaddy50 at factor. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Which one's more important, right guard or box safety? Now you dig a little bit deeper and say, okay, um, what is stronger or weaker on the Packers roster? Last year we had a top 10 offense. The defense struggled. The defense struggled specifically. We took a step back against the pass. So to me, I think it makes the most sense here at 41 to take Tyler Newbin. Um, over Christian Haynes, as much as I love Christian Haynes. And Christian Haynes, again, on my board, he's technically in the 27 spot. Newbin's in the 32, but they're in the same tier. So some would say, well, you're reaching for Newbin. Not if they're in the same tier. You essentially got the same grade on them, whether it's a 66 or a 65, whatever it may be. So I'm going to go Tyler Newbin here for sure um, and just go ahead and button up that box safety spot. Um, if we had re-signed Rudy Ford already, I might go a different route here and think, you know what, I'm okay with Rudy coming in and helping play in the box a bit uh, alongside Xavier McKinney. But the fact that we still haven't re-signed uh, Rudy Ford, I think that's the route I'm going to go here just to kind of go ahead and button that up at safety. So I'm going to go Tyler Newbin at 41. Again, his average draft position is 39.4 on this platform. He's ranked 26 according to PFF, so he's definitely going to be gone before we pick again at 58. So let's go ahead and draft Tyler Newbin, safety out of Minnesota. I'm liking this draft so far, man. I'm digging it. Um, Let's see here as I try to remember who it was. We took Johnny Newton with that first pick, right? So let me separate those for us. All right, so, so far our picks. At 25, we took uh, Johnny Newton, defensive lineman out of Illinois, the top defensive lineman in the draft, interior defensive lineman. And then we took Tyler Newbin, the top safety in the draft. So I'm liking the way this is uh, this is setting up so far. So let's go back here and, and 
we're going to do a couple of more picks here using my board, and then we'll just finish it out with the uh, PFF. Let me see where we're at on time here. What are we, 22 minutes in? We're actually doing okay. Because I'm going to run our prospects anyway eventually. I don't want to bore you guys to death, um, you know, uh, talking about every single pick. So let's see here. We got Xavier Leggett might have the best accent in the entire draft. I don't think it's even close, to be honest with you. I think he's got the best country accent in the entire draft. The problem is he's pretty low on my board, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to find him here. Xavier Leggett, where are you at, sir? Now, you can not You can never accuse me of being biased in the fact that I'm not willing to take Xavier Leggett higher than he is on my board just because of the uh, the accent. I've got him in the 189 spot, game, And I wish I had my board pulled up where I could explain why he's that low. There will be another time for that. But Xavier Leggett goes 42, and I've got him in the 189 spot. That's absolutely wild. Um, Mike Sainer still is coming off the board next, cornerback. So I'll try to shut up and blow through these real quick. He's in the 58 spot for me. So that's about right, you know, right there within the wheelhouse anyway. Not too bad of a reach. Michael Penix Jr. Um, Michael Penix on my board is in the 29 spot. So that's great value there. Who took him? The Raiders. The Raiders went with Michael Penix Jr. So that's interesting for sure. Uh, Chris Braswell um, out of Alabama goes to the Saints, it looks like. So edge defender. Chris Braswell. Let's go ahead and get him off the board. Oh. All righty. Chris Braswell is gone. There you go. Let's see. Uh, Zach Frazier, center out of uh, out of West Virginia. One of the one of the best centers in this draft. Man, he's going to be solid. I've got him both him and Bo Lemur um, pretty close to each other here. So um, if we had to choose between the two and one flies off the board, we're feeling we're feeling just as good about the other, you know, in Bo Lemur there, according to my board. We got Peyton Wilson, linebacker, obviously uh, coming off the board here. That's a lot of people's, you know, favorite prospect in this draft for sure um, is Peyton Wilson out of NC State. TJ Tampa goes in the 48 spot. Let's see where TJ Tampa is. This is uh, one of uh, Jacob's favorite guys in the draft for sure. I've got him uh, 80th on my board, so no love lost there for me, for sure. Uh, Patrick Paul comes off the board next. I got him in the 75 spot. Um, next, we have got Javon Bullard, another sa – there's a safety that uh, I know – I think that's Jacob's top safety in the draft, if I remember correctly. I've got him in the 62 spot. He's my second best safety. So, you see, we probably would have lost Tyler Newbin right there. That's a good point. So, Tyler Newbin is significantly higher – than uh, Javon Bullard, who I have on the 62 spot on my board. Um, Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver. Where's old Ricky Pearsall? Some people are really high on him, and I think he's kind of low on my board as well. Um, Ricky Pearsall. Just bear with me here as I try to find him. So I'm pretty sure that when I found him the other day, I was like, man, he is way lower than most people have him, if I remember correctly. He may have been one that I already had off the board momentarily. Yeah, not seeing him here. If we come back across him, we'll know he's picked there. There was one that I accidentally deleted just a second ago when I was removing another player. Roman Wilson, wide receiver is next. Uh, love to see these receivers flying off the board before the Packers pick, man. Absolutely love to see that. Uh, Roman Wilson, Roman Wilson, wide receiver. I've got him in the 103 spot, so he is gone now. Um which is great news for us. Let's see. We got Braden Fist, defensive lineman. I've got him significantly lower than most people. I've got him in the 85 spot. I see some people that have him really high, like in the top 30. Um, but, again, I've got him in the 85 spot. He's off the board now. Jatavian Sanders. So this is this is a good little exercise here. He comes off at 54. I've got him in the 24 spot. I think he's hands down the best tight end in this draft, no doubt about it. If Christian Did Christian Haynes fall to us? If Christian Haynes fell to us, you're going to hear me do the happy dance over here, ladies and gentlemen. Kyron Amagaji is next, uh, obviously an offensive tackle. Um, let's see where he is at on my board. Let's get him out of the way here real quick. 
All right, got it. Next, you've got uh, Jonathan Brooks, uh, running back. Let's see where old Jonathan Brooks was. It's cool going into the offseason when we started to build the board. I really thought Jonathan Brooks would end up being one of my top running backs, if not my top running back. He's He landed in the 78 spot. And if I remember correctly, I think running backs for me start at 42 with Audrey Estime and Blake Corum. So kind of interesting there. Max Melton's another one I'm going to get a lot of hate for. Max Melton goes here at 57. I've got him significantly lower on my board than everybody on the face of the earth. There's no doubt about that. Everybody seems to be really high on Max, and I just – I'm not that big on him. Um, I've got him in the 177 spot, okay? I'm not saying he's not going to be a good corner. I just don't understand the whole hype around him being, you know, in the in the first two rounds personally. Um, I know he had a huge – I understand why it happened. It's because of the senior – the senior bowl performance, right? That's the main reason. So there you go. All right, we're on the clock at 58. So let's go back up and look and see. Like I said, we'll just kind of – this is the last spot we'll use for my big board. We might take a peek back at it. Hands down, the best player on my board, if he's still on here and we haven't overlooked anything, is Christian Haynes. So let's see if Christian Haynes is still on the board. He is the top interior offensive lineman. They got him in the 64 spot. We're taking him at 58. Guys, he's 27 on my board right now as it sits. So us taking Christian Haynes here, remember earlier we were trying to decide, that was the decision we made, Tyler Newbern or Christian Haynes. Well, you've seen Javon Bullard fly off the board there at number 50. So it's obvious that would have been Tyler Newbern's spot. So now we would have been picking between um, Javon Bullard. If Yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, there was no more safeties taken. We would be picking between Javon Bullard and Christian Haynes right now. And instead, we've already got the best safety in the draft, in my opinion, in Tyler Newbern. Now we get Christian Haynes, one of the better guards in the draft. We'll plug and play him at right guard. I am loving the way this, this draft is ended up. And, again, it, to the best of my knowledge, Braylon Trice is still there, I believe. So another one, too, is Tavondre Sweat. I just noticed that. So there you go. Let's take Christian Haynes. Guard out of Washington. I, I'm really, really liking this draft so far. So far we got Johnny Newton, we got Tyler Newbin, and we got Christian Haynes. Um, so shaping up pretty nice. I'm going to take a quick peek at my board. I'm not going to try to remove everyone. I'm just going to try to eliminate them on the surface here. Let's see if Braylon Trice is still there. He should be listed as an edge defender. It's looking like he is not. Um, let's see here real quick. Braylon Trice. Yeah, he's already gone. So Braylon Trice did go to the Atlanta Falcons. So that kind of gives you an idea. Him cutting all that weight, going to hurt his draft stock a bit. Um, looks like he went 74 there. To the Falcons. So that's a good little um just a good little mental note there. Tavondre Sweat ended up going number 75 to the Chicago Bears. How about that, man? Um so obviously he's going to he's going to fall a little bit with the personal issues we just talked about, but he's off the board now. So when you look at my board, we're looking for Cooper Beebe. Let's take a look and see if we see Cooper Beebe anywhere. Um uh, Cooper Beebe is still there, be a bit of a reach here according to PFF. I've got Cooper Beebe in the 36th spot. The problem is we already got our right guard, right? So if you're going interior offensive line, you'd be looking at kind of a center spot, right? Well, you got Bo Lemur sitting there. Okay, you've also got Cedric Von Prahn. Some people are going, hey, what about Cedric Von Prahn? I'm pretty sure I've got him lower, if I remember correctly. I've got Cedric Von Prahn in the uh, the 63 spot. I've got Bo Lemur in the 40 spot. So you can see that's a significant uh, difference there when it comes to the center position, right? So as it sits right now, if Bo Lemur hasn't been taken, I'm, I'm assuming he hasn't. Let me just take a quick peek back here. Yeah, it looks like he has not been taken yet. Of course, we could just check. Uh, yeah, he's right there center, so we're good. All right. Um, So what it comes down to is Cooper Beebe and Bo Lemur, right? And then obviously uh, Bo Lemur, I would think, would get the nod over Cooper Beebe because we already got us a right guard. Um, Trey Benson still on the, on the board here. He is not. So Trey Benson is gone. So we can go ahead and remove him from my board. There you go. Um, Chris Jenkins, defensive lineman. You guys know, we, we talked about a mock draft, the article earlier today where they had the Packers taking Chris Jenkins a little later. It looks like he is already gone. I hope I'm not overlooking him here. Nope. He's gone. Okay. So Chris Jenkins is off the board. Get him out of here. All right, you got your other two running backs, I'm assuming, Audric Estime and Blake Corum. They're on my board. Let's take a quick peek. Um, Audric Estime is still there. 
Blake Corum is gone. And again, I'm just I'm kind of updating it here on the fly because I want to see. All right, here's what's the best available according to my board currently right now. Uh, Gabriel Murphy at edge. Let's take a look and see if he's still on the board. Gabriel Murphy, or is it Grayson Murphy? Grayson Murphy. Okay, I got a typo there. Let me change that real quick. Definitely need to change. I'm making a note. You're putting all this information in real quick, boys. Whew, I'm telling you, I've, I've found so many errors on my boards this year. That's what happens when you get old, though. So, Grayson Murphy out of UCLA. All right, cool. So, he is still available for sure. Um, so there he sits from UCLA, edge defender. Cade Stover, I'm sure, is probably still there. Let's not worry about that. Leonard Taylor, we're not going to take another defensive lineman. you got Kyron Amagaji already flew off the board, if I remember correctly. So we just overlooked him earlier. Um, Junior Colson, is Junior Colson still on the board? This is where it's going to get fun. I'm going to do 88-91 this way, and then we're going rapid fire to, to finish this thing up. Um, Junior Colson is not on the board. So what we've learned here is we missed out on some solid linebackers, obviously. Now, keep in mind, I've got Cedric Gray kind of in the same ballpark here. Um, he's not too far down. He's in the 64 spot. Colson was in the 52 spot, so he's still available. So we still got him to pull from. We're going to be picking at 91. Cedric Gray will definitely be there, right? So Cedric Gray is definitely going to be on the board. When we pick again at 91, we probably go with the other guy, at the moment, I would like to get a mock linebacker. Cedric Gray and Junior Colson are the two mock linebackers in this draft. If somebody takes him um, <laughs> before my next pick here, I'm trying to see needs. Needs don't really line up, right? The, the Bucks don't really need a mock linebacker that bad, and the Cardinals don't need one at all according to the system here. So we're going to go ahead and slot Cedric Gray in for our number 91 pick. So now it comes back to the current pick of 88. You got Cooper BB at the 36 spot. You got Bo Limmer um, center at the 40 spot. You got Gabriel Murphy, edge defender, Grayson Murphy, sorry, edge defender there in the 45 spot. Leonard Taylor in the 48 spot. Mekki Wingo in the 54 spot, if he's still available. I don't even know if he is. Um, Dominic, Dominic Pooney. Um, is there as well. That's one that would be interesting if he's still on the clock or still on the board. Let's see if he's still there. Dominique Pony, he is. All right, so he's still available. Um, go back to Mecky real quick just to make sure. Mecky Wingo, he's still there too. So we got some really solid picks here. Leonard Taylor's still there. And uh, like I said, Grayson Murphy's still there. So tough decision, man. Right here, you got multiple players you'd be interested in. We're definitely going to take Cedric Gray with the number 91 pick. So what would be most important here, gang? We already got our guard. Do we get Bo Lemur, in my opinion, I think is the second best center in this draft, according to my board? Or do we go with a halfback Audric Estime? Or do we go with another defensive lineman? I think it's pretty easy here. I'm going to go with Bo Lemur out of Arkansas. I'm going to go ahead – and get the center, potentially the center of the future. Let him camp battle with uh, with our boy Josh Myers. Who knows? Maybe he smokes his head, comes out the other side, and we got a significant upgrade at the center position. Or if he doesn't beat him out, and next year, uh, obviously next offseason, Josh Myers becomes a free agent, then you've got Bo Limmer to step right in and be your new starting center. So I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the trigger here. His average draft position is 107. I'm going to take him at 98. Um, I'm going to go Bo Limmer, uh, center out of Arkansas. Again, he is in the 40 spot on my board. So now the question is Cedric Gray still there? We're going to go ahead and get our linebacker. If he is, I'm going to take a look at the other linebackers too. Um, yeah, hands down, he's the best linebacker. On, on my board here. There's no doubt about it. I've got him in the 64 spot. We're going to get him at 91. I know the average draft position is 134.4. You go to different databases, different mock draft setups, they're all going to be different across the board, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger here and go Cedric Gray. I'm loving this draft, man. I really am. So we'll go Cedric Gray out of North Carolina with our 91st pick. All right, so, so far, using our board, this is essentially what's happened, gang. 
Um, and I'm going to wrap it up real quick in rapid fire fashion um, when it comes to uh, kind of finishing up here on the PFF side. So we went with a defensive lineman in Johnny Newton. We went um, safety, Tyler Newbin, right? We went guard, Christian Haynes, and then we went center, Bo Limmer. All right, that's our pick so far. So we've already hit. Defensive line, safety, guard, and center. So I'm going to go ahead and close my draft board up, and we're just going to use PFF from here on out. And uh, hopefully this looks all right. Boy, that made it look wonky, didn't it? I screwed that up. See if we can bring that back. Try to tighten that back up for you guys and gals real quick. There we go. That's a lot better. A little bit harder for me to read, but that's okay. All right, so here we are at 126. Pick 126. We're not going to do any trades. Um, we're going all here for sure. Let's see where the best available uh, position is so far. You got edge defender Xavier Thomas, safety Cole Bishop, which is a lot of people are really big on Cole Bishop. I wouldn't be opposed to taking another safety right now if that's the best player available. I kind of feel like we need to address cornerback. Um, they've got Kamal Haddon as one of their top guys right now. I'm going to take a quick glance on my board and just see who the best cornerback available is. Um, I'm big on DJ James. I'm going to take a look at these corners real quick. Big on DJ James. He is obviously gone. Okay. So let's just go ahead and slide him over. Josh Newton, I've gotten the 71 spot. Um, Josh Newton is still there. Average draft position of 138.3. It would definitely be a reach according to PFF. But again, if we were to kind of glance at my board, that would be a great pick. Getting the 71st best talent um, on the vertical board. Yeah, at this spot, man, that's going to be tough. So if we were to look at him and what other position have we not touched right now? We got linebacker, too. Forgot about that. So we're good at linebacker. Um, not good, but, you know, we've we've kind of addressed it. Another position is probably offensive tackle. Um, you're kind of looking for that swing tackle, right, unless you have a lot of faith in Caleb Jones. So if you were to look at it, you got Christian Jones – at tackle, um, he is significantly lower than our boy that we uh, we just mentioned, uh, old uh, Josh Newton. Yeah, he's way down there. So yeah, that's that's pretty wild. Christian Jones, they are a lot higher on than I am. Evidently, let me see see if we can find where Christian Jones is. I'm not seeing him. I'm thinking he's pretty low though. All right, cool. We'll just move along. Let's go Josh Newton here. I know it seems like a bit of a reach, but he won't be available when we pick again. I think he's better than Haddon, me personally. Um, you know, uh, Kamal Haddon out of uh, Tennessee. So I'm going to go Josh Newton here at corner. So we get cornerback address there. All right. Now we go rapid fire. I'm not even going to look back at my board. I ain't going to do it to y'all. All right. We're just going to go rapid fire here. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, actually, if I can pull this over, I hope I don't screw the whole thing up. If I can pull that over, it'll stay the same width. Yeah, now we can go full screen. Here we go. All right, cool. That way I can actually see the chat a little bit, gang. We can chat here with you. Um, what are you guys thinking right here? Again, what we've already taken, and I, I hate that PFF doesn't show what we've already taken, but um, it probably would. There's, I'm sure there's a screen there. Yeah, the uh, let me get back over to this tab real quick. All right. Um, yeah, so we've taken defensive line, safety, guard, center, linebacker, corner. Kind of feel like we just need to focus on best player available here. Um, let's see here uh, what we've got going on, what we got cooking. you got J.D. Bertrand, linebacker out of Notre Dame, Joe Milton, quarterback, uh, Javon Foster, tackle out of Missouri, safety James Williams, um, halfback Dylan Johnson, when we talk about needs, obviously the needs that we needed to fill were cornerback, linebacker, offensive line, defensive line, edge, halfback, and safety. So you potentially be looking for another linebacker here, right? Really linebacker, safety, corner, I feel like are the top needs um, where we sit right now. I'm not very big on J.D. Bertrand, if I remember correctly. I want to say J.D. Bertrand was kind of low on my board. Um and actually, let's see if our boy, I wonder if our boy Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is still there. I'm eager to see where he's at. No, he's long gone. 
Got it. Okay. So, yeah, none, none of these linebackers, other than Trayvon Wallace and the fact that uh, the 33rd team is so high on him, that's the only one I would kind of, eh, you know, but you're kind of going against the PFF grain here if you do that. So let's go linebacker. Let's go safety. Let's go corner and see if we can attack this thing. Um, J.D. Bertrand is hands down the best player available there. Um, yeah, no, nobody's really grabbing my attention here. If we went best player available according to PFF, that's definitely the route we would go. We went tackle and added tackle into the mix. It's still J.D. Bertrand. So, it's tough. What are you guys thinking here, chat? Talk to me. Who would you like here? You see the top uh, top players available, and I've got it kind of sorted by positions of need. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and add halfback in there too just to see. As far as tailback, Dylan Johnson, uh, Vidal, yeah. That's a tough one here. It's a tough spot. If I had access to my board right now and we took the time to do it, it'd probably be a little bit easier one. Um, United Bates says take a look. At McLaughlin, Coach Lynn says at a corner. So let's look at McLaughlin real quick, cornerback. Holy cow, look at you, Bates. Look at you. PFF grades the last three years, 69, 77, 91. Now keep in mind, only 382 defensive snaps, so a smaller sample size there, right? Am I thinking right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had 900 the year before, so something must have happened there. Probably some kind of injury or something. He only played nine games in 2023, but, man, he – he showed some promise for sure. Um, played the corner 349 snaps, so he's definitely just an outside corner is what it's looking like. Um, yeah, so uh, Dwight McLaughlin would be good. Yeah, corner of tackle Mark Zambito says. So McLaughlin right now would probably be our pick. Let's take a look at Javon Foster make sure we're not missing anything. Whoo, look at here, boys. It's going to be tough. So we're talking about having a swing tackle, right? You got someone – maybe you can get someone to compete with Rasheed Walker, but also at the same time, um, you know, have uh, – say uh, say you have uh, Rasheed Walker rises to the occasion. You could have J uh, Javon Foster here play your swing tackle position and be that backup left tackle. In 2021, 80, 80, then 84. He's gotten better every single year. Uh, pass block grade through the roof, run block grade, 85.8 is even better. Zone grade, 91. Holy cow. Yeah, I can't pass up on this game. We're going to go with Javon Foster here. Um, we kind of need that swing tackle, and I understand what you're seeing with the corner too. There, Bates and Coach Lynn. Um, Dwight McLaughlin would be, would be pretty solid pick there as well. The problem is there's a better chance of McLaughlin being there than there is Javon Foster, right? So let's go Javon Foster. We're going to go offensive tackle Javon Foster out of Missouri. So we went O-tackle there. Bates is going to sign off and say, screw you, Clayton, I'm going home. But that's, that's the route we're going to go here. Um, all right, so up next, next spot, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Coach Land said Foster is a, is a Packer top. Um, Bates says, yeah, I don't disagree. I didn't know Foster had such good numbers. I didn't either. And that's the great thing about um, these exercises, Bates, is you can kind of uncover a little more information than you had before. I know some people look at mock drafts like they're a big waste of time. If you're doing it to just try to dunk on people and say, ah, oh, my draft's better than yours, I think they are a waste of time. If you're doing it to gather intel, well, this player is constantly available in this spot. Oh, let's look at the numbers. Holy cow, this dude's a, this dude's a monster. He's a beast, right? So, uh, yeah, Mark Zambito says Mark Foster down for the future. All right, um, up next, best corner available um, is Devin Shire, according to PFF. Don't like the numbers very well there, though. He took a huge dip last year, 61. So let's go back to the positions of need. I won't put tackle on there anymore. Let's go back to running back. Let's go to corner. Let's go safety for depth. We still need us a backup edge, seeing that uh, Kingsley and Ibarre is going to be hurt for a good portion of the year. And let's go linebacker, too, just for good measures. Still Chambers pops up. PFF is booty cheeks, right? Frank Gore Jr. there. Man, this might be our pick, guys. Frank Gore Jr., starting in 2021, PFF grade, 77, 91, 88. His zone grade. What do we run? Zone run, right, guys? His zone grade, 89.6. So right now, Frank Gore Jr. is in the lead for me. Um 
Here's Tyron Hopper. That's a guy that the Packers actually set up for a top 30 visit. Could be a smoke screen. 60, 77, 51, not a big fan there. Um, Jace McClellan, we're not looking at any more running backs. We know Frank Gore is, is the truth if we go that route. Here we go, Omar Brown, safety, starting in 2021. 83, dipped down to a 64, jumped right back up to an 82. Coverage grade, 84.5. Run defense, 74.3. Um, snaps by alignment. He played in the slot 434 snaps. Mm-mm-mm. And like Coach Lynn just pointed out, Omar Brown, uh, Omar Brown actually visited with the Packers. That's a senior bowl guy too. Bingo. We have that short list here somewhere. I do these exercises for a reason, and I just chuck the paper over to the side like a moron. So uh, I don't have him listed as being on both lists, but I could be wrong there. Um, Omar Omar Brown might be the pick here. So it really comes down to Omar Brown. And Frank Gore Jr., we won't look any further. I like those two picks. Omar Brown's projected to go or average draft positions 215. We got a pick coming up at 219. Frank Gore's is 209. Man, that's tough. Which one's more important? A safety, a safety that can play the slot and be your backup safety, or do you go uh, Frank Gore Jr., halfback? Now we got Lee 86 saying, uh, Gore Jr. over Jace McClellan, no way. Let's take a look at Jace just to make sure. Play for a big program, didn't he? Look at the grades, 74, 77, 79. Nowhere near Frank Gore Jr. Of course, he probably played some higher talent, right? His zone grade is just about at the median line. You see that right there? Um, so his zone, he's more of a gap runner with an 83 graded gap and 76 at zone. So I would still, I would take, personally, I would take Frank Gore Jr. over Jace McClellan. Um, I got to respectfully disagree there, Lee, but appreciate your opinion, Bubba. Um, let's see. I need to chat here. I got it narrowed down to two. Frank Gore Jr. or Omar Brown? We got to go quick. What are we thinking here, gang? Frank Gore Jr., running back, or Omar Brown, versatile safety that can play the slot. Bates, Lynn, you've been the most active in here. Uh, Zambito, same. Who are we thinking here? Zambito says Brown, right? So... Pete M. says, I don't care who it is. We, we just need to go safety. <laughs> J. Cole says, Gore, uh, Gore Jr. And they're coming in quick. Brown, Brown, safety, Omar Brown. Isaiah Davis slipped in there. I like it. I like the enthusiasm. Brown, looks like Brown. It's a runaway. Let's go Omar Brown here, safety. So we got us a safety slash slot there. That's, that's really exciting. All right, now we are at pick 219, right? 219. Jace McClellan still on the board there. Frank Gore Jr. is now gone. Um, there's Tanner Bordellini. We have taken defensive line, safety, guard, center, linebacker, cornerback, offensive tackle, and a hybrid safety slash slot there. So um, we're still needing running back, right? I'm going to go ahead and remove safety for the moment. I'm going to put cornerback back up. We're going to put edge up there because we need us a backup edge. And we're going to put linebacker up there in case someone pops up. So right now you got Jace McClellan running back out of Alabama. You got Mayim Williams. We already looked at McClellan. Um, Williams is uh, yeah his zone grade is cheeks there last year. Man, he um, must have got hurt or something. He only forty nine attempts. He hasn't gotten a whole lot of attempts, has he? Eh, I don't like that pick. Not enough experience for me there. There's Isaiah Davis. I know many people are big on Isaiah Davis. Um, golly, rightfully so. I know he played for the Jackrabbits, but my goodness, zone grade 91.1, rushing grade 96.8, gap grade two 94.5, elusiveness rating 139.3. This is one of those guys that Jacob pointed out, I believe. Jacob and Tim did, and we did a deep dive on him. This might be the pick here. He's the top running back for me right now. Isaiah Davis is the top running back. If we wanted to look at corner, um, nope, that's cheeks, not gonna do it. And A.J. Woods, no offense, sir. Um, Marcellus Dial, 79.1. Um, you get to your top linebacker, it's going to be uh, Curtis Jacobs from Penn State. Grades aren't great there. Keep in mind, too, we brung back Eric Wilson. We brung back Isaiah McDuffie. Um, you also got Christian Welch. We already drafted a linebacker in Cedric Gray. So I feel like we're not – we're not very light at linebacker, although Trayvon Wallace would be an interesting one. He's pretty high on my board. This would be a great quality pick, according to the 33rd team in my board, but not necessarily PFF. Um, 
I'm going to include him here because we won't have a shot at him with the next pick. So here's who we're going to decide between, guys. We're going to do- decide between I need to chat to pick it. We're either going to go Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. All right. And, yeah, I agree. Coach Lynn says Davis is a Packers guy. There's no two ways about him. And that zone top run, um, obviously his teammate, former teammate there, Tucker Craft, I believe they played together unless he was just a last-year transfer to South Dakota State. So uh, that would be kind of cool. Keep that pop line going there. So it's between Isaiah Davis and Traven Wallace linebacker, just because I know how high he is on my board and other boards. Matter of fact, I'll comb through real quick and tell you exactly where he's sitting on my board to give you guys a better idea. Um, he's lower on my board, obviously, than the 33rd team. I've got him in the 175 spot. So he'd definitely be worthy of this pick at 219. So who would you guys rather have, Isaiah Davis or Traven Wallace here? You pick. Let's go to the chat. Um, Davis is a Packer guy. M. Smitty says Davis. William D. Lofton Sr. says Davis. Um, Wallace is good, right? Mentioning Traven Wallace is another one. Mark Zambito. J. Cole says Davis. Pete M. says Davis. Coach Lynn says Davis. Um, I like what United Bates is saying right here. United Bates says Davis and Hope Wallace is there at 245. I like it. There's a, there, it's it's possible for sure, right? All right, let's do it. Let's go Isaiah Davis here, running back out of South Dakota State. So we got us our halfback. We now have four halfbacks on the roster. I would imagine Emmanuel Wilson's going to hop on and off the practice squad. You'll probably protect someone like Isaiah Davis if you were to draft him for sure. So, all right, now let's talk about needs here. We got our halfbacks. We don't have to include that this time. So now what we're going to include is – Let's go cornerback. Let's go. We already took two safety, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep safety off this time. Let's go edge, and let's go linebacker. First of all, Traven Wallace is there. There's nothing to decide here, right? You got it, William William D. Lofton Senior says Wallace is there. Bang. Let's do it. Let's pull the trigger on Traven Wallace. I personally don't think he's gonna be there. He's one of the uh, one of the mock linebackers in this draft. The 33rd team has him as the third best mock in this draft. But hey, if they're going to let him drop all the way to 245 to us, we're going to take him. So there is your another linebacker. Your linebacking room got a lot better, I feel like, um, than we were previously worried about. We picked up two mock linebackers in uh, Cedric Gray and Traven Wallace. You've got McDuffie. You've got Wilson. You got Welch, and of course. The superstar, I'm hoping he really, really flashes in his 4-3 defense under Jeff Halfley, Quay Walker. If you can get Quay Walker at the wheel, because now you've got you a true Mike and Cedric Gray, that's exciting stuff. So, All right, pick 255, guys. Um, I'm not even going to put the needs up there. Let's just go best player available, I guess. Um, Was there anything we didn't touch? Uh, Let me back up here a minute. We got defensive line. We got safety, two safeties. We got a guard, we got a center, we got a linebacker, we got a cornerback, we got an offensive tackle, we got a slot safety hybrid, we got a halfback, we got a linebacker. Edge. Need to get us an edge here, guys. Let's see what the edge room looks like. Whoo, don't know any of these names. Let's take a quick peek, though. PFF grade, 63-76 for Brian Ugwa, I think is how you say it, out of Miami of Ohio. Next guy, grades aren't pretty. Miles Cole, grades aren't pretty. Looks like we're coming away from this draft with no – that one's not – that's that's not too bad. Oki Anama um, out of Charlotte. Charlotte 49ers. Is that the, is that really their name, the Charlotte 49ers? What the crap? Um, his PFF grade, 72, 73, 71, so that's not bad if we were just to key in on edge. Um, it's looking like he is the best grade-wise. Let's look at his size real quick. There's got to be a knock on him, right? 6'5", 244, a little lot in the loafers there. We'd have to put a little weight on them, about 20 pounds. Um, if we were to go edge here, that's that would be my pick, Anoma. Um, let's see what the chat's saying. Many people are saying offensive line and saying we need three. All right, let's do that. Let's pop those guys up there real quick. Maybe we'll find us a stud. Let's go interior and offense. We're not going to take another center because we got two on the roster, right? Um, here's Leviston, Cheeks. Um, let's see, Delmar Glaze, 71, 73, 73 out of Maryland. That one looks pretty decent. Let's go down to Belton. No. So right now, Delmar Glaze is, is the front runner at offensive line. That's a center, too. J.C. Davis. Ooh, looky here. A little upside. 
66th and 84 last year. J.C. Davis playing for the New New Mexico. Um, many people saying Glaze. Uh, J. Cole's asking for Grable. Is Grable there? Um, good question, buddy. I'm not seeing him here. Yeah, it looks like he must be gone. So what are we thinking here, guys? Are we going Glaze or should we go with uh, um, Ugwa? You want to go offensive tackle Glaze? or edge defender Ugwa here, and then we'll wrap this thing up. People are saying get glaze, all right. Uh-oh, Coach Lynn says tight end Wiley. Is Wiley still on the board there, Coach? He is, Jared Wiley. Hmm, that's interesting. Some people are really high on him. Six foot seven, 260 pounds, that is wild. PFF grade 60, 76, 68. I love people in the chat. Mark Zambito, O-line, just go O-line. There you go. <laughs> Number one Packer fan. Hey, hey, chill out on my 49ers, LOL. I never heard of them, man. I apologize. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, he can run. Also talking about Wiley. All right, guys, it's going to be between Wiley and Glaze. What do we think here, Wiley or Glaze? I know Coach Lynn's on Wiley. Pete M. is on Glaze. Dave MX6 is on Glaze. So Glaze is two to one right now. Glaze or Wiley, guys? Glaze or Wiley? It's two to one Glaze right now. Final pick's always the toughest, man. We're at the 58 minute mark. We did good. All right, there you go. William D. Lofton Sr. says go tied in. So it's now tied up between Glaze and Wiley. J. Cole says Glaze. Mark Zambito says Wiley. It's still tied up. M. Smitty says Glaze. So now Glaze has the edge. One more. One more vote, guys. We get up to – oh, yeah, you already – I already included yours, William. Glaze is up once. United Bates says Glaze. Number one Packer fan. You're trying to keep me in there all day, Bob. He says Ugwa. I think it's Glaze, guy. Yeah, it's Glaze. Glaze has got it. So, all right, there you go. We're going to go Delmar Glaze out of Maryland. Again, PFF grade 71, 73, 73. First look, six foot five, 328 pounds. That's a hoss of a man. Let's do it. Delmar Glaze tackle out of Maryland. So we got us another offensive tackle with the last pick in the draft. So there is how the mock draft ended up. Let's go ahead and grab us a screenshot of this. We got us a B plus, not bad considering I use my board. Um, Johnny Newton at number 25, we took defensive lineman Johnny Newton out of Illinois. At number 41, we took safety Tyler Newman um, out of Minnesota. Number 58, we took Christian Haynes guard out of Connecticut. Number 88, we took center Bo Lemmer out of Arkansas. Number 91, we took linebacker Cedric Gray. They give us an F for that one. You can – whatever. I don't care what you say about Cedric Gray. Um, 126, we went cornerback Josh Newton. Um, 169, we went Javen Foster, tackle out of Missouri. 202, we went safety Omar Brown, kind of a hybrid safety out of Nebraska. 219, we went halfback Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State, just a zone run monster. Uh, 245. We went linebacker Traven Wallace. I never think I don't I don't think he'll ever be there, but if he is, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, out of Kentucky, and then at 255, we got tackle Delmar Glaze out of Maryland. So we got us a B plus. Not too bad, guys. Could have been worse, right? Could have been a lot worse. So there you go, man. Um, cool. We're at the hour mark. Look at that. We did it. We did it, guys. We absolutely did it. So appreciate y'all jumping on here with me and kind of riding this thing out, man. This was a lot of fun. Um, it's always fun to just get on here and, and talk a little uh, a little ball with you guys. And um, just like I said, a little mid-afternoon look. And um, I agree, yeah, everybody's saying good draft. Uh, you can't have enough old line. Yeah, I agree, man. Mark Zambito, good draft. Coach Lynn approves. He says solid. Ron Sample says he likes it. I think it's pretty good, man. Not bad. Not a bad little draft. So. All right, we're out of here, guys. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us again. I just wanted to get through that early rounds with my board and kind of see how that laid out. I'll share this on the show tonight. I know we're going to get into some Johnny or some uh, Tavondre Sweat talk and kind of talk about how that might may or may not affect the draft uh, moving forward. If you guys would, hit that like button for us. Hit sub on the channel. Uh, we appreciate y'all. The likes help boost the algorithm so other Packer fans can find this channel, find this content. If you haven't done that and you're watching on Twitter, you can click on my Twitter profile real quick. You'll see a YouTube link. That'll send you directly to the channel where you can like and subscribe right there. We greatly appreciate it. So uh, we will see you guys this evening. 
for PTA Live with Gang. I'm sure to get out of control like it always does. Here we go. William Lofton says, hey, Clayton, look out for my mock draft in the morning. We'll be looking for it, buddy. Make sure you send it to me on Twitter, all right, for sure. Um, yeah. All right, we're out, guys. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for uh, making us a part of your day, and we will see you tonight. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon. I'll actually see you here in about, I don't know, an hour and a half. Y'all take care. The power sweep. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. We ask our YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the, with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. Look at this play where we're trying to get it to seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley.